advised that this meeting is being audio video recorded. The agenda lists all topics which may be discussed at the meeting and are those reasonably anticipated by the chair. Votes may be taken as a result of these discussions. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to, to the extent permitted by the open meeting law. Um, first order of business. Uh, oh, just to note, um, we have a member participating remotely, uh, Chairman Birch. Uh, therefore, all votes tonight will be by roll call, um, and I will take attendance. Richard Birch. Present. Uh, I'm Todd Dwyer. Um, Bob Pease. Present. Katie Childs. Present. Carl Lock. Present. Jack Rabbit. Present. Ken Jones. Present. And Associate Member Jeff Viviano appears to be absent. Any announcements from the commission? Yes, uh, Mr. Vice, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Mr. Vice Chair, uh, per regu regulations adopted by the town of Lunenburg on December 5th, 2006, I am submitting my Mullen certificate, which basically says I've read all the materials and allows me to participate in this meeting. And as I've become familiar with not only uh, the minutes, but also talk to our agent and our uh, chairman. Very good. Any other announcements from the commission? Uh, seeing none, I'll take any comments from the public. No comments from the public. Um, then I'd just like to note that, uh, well, no, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's open our first hearing. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Lunenburg Wetlands Byland Bylaw, Section 335, John and Joanne Tanner have filed a notice of intent for a replacement septic system in the 100 foot buffer zone at 69 Kilburn Street. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Dan Proctor, contractor for the uh, Tanners. Here's my green cards. Thank you. Um, what we have is a failed septic system, obviously, replacement of that system on Kilburn Street, 69 Kilburn Street. Um, this plan was approved on Monday night's meeting at the Board of Health, so we have a permit in, in hand. Existing three bedroom house, which is on a slab, um, existing septic tank, existing failed leach field. Um, proposing a new septic tank pump chamber, pumping over to an area um, on the edge of the driveway, which maintains our 100 foot well offset of his own well and a hundred foot well offset from the neighbor across the street on Kilburn Street. Uh, really the only option with the land that he owns, um, this whole portion of his property is where the Kinder Morgan gas line goes through. Mm -hmm. So obviously that is not an option in this wetland. Pretty much continues down the old other um, side of his property. So really this is our only location obviously very close um, but really pretty small excavation in the sense that the existing tank new tank goes in with a, the same hole of the existing tank once that's pumped and removed um, just a pump line so so basically the, three foot four foot excavation the existing tank and pump chamber are both within the 30 foot but they're just replacing in kind what what had been there that's correct exactly mm -hmm. yep um, and then aside from the pump chamber and uh, the tank the only other grading for the leach field will you have a little bit of grading within between the 30 and the 50 but uh, everything else is outside of the 50. that's correct yep so the system is outside of that 50 foot buffer small retaining wall just to keep it from going on to his driveway okay as far as grading any questions from commissioners and the driveways where dan uh driveways right here existing driveway off at Kilburn. okay Those thank you yep uh, Mr. Chair, uh, where is the existing septic system? I just don't happen to see it on the plan. So this little amoeba-looking cloud down here just above where it says site plan, that's the existing failed system. So it was immediately adjacent to the... Uh, oh, okay. I do see it now. Tank yeah. chamber, yep. And the tanks are going back where the existing tanks are? That's correct. All right. Um, the areas that are being... Um, Graded in a 30 to 50 foot zone. Are they just going to be left to go back fallow, or we're putting them on back in there? That'll be loomed and seeded. Uh, springtime, obviously, but we'll hay mulch it. You know, for the winter season, go back in the spring, regrade it, screen loom, seed. 
What is the, um, is it lawn now? No, it's wooded. Um, roughly four to five pines would have to come down in the 12 to 18 inch size. Mm -hmm. uh, two to three hardwoods, 12 to 18 inch side, size, and five to six, you know, six inch smaller trees. Mm -hmm. So this is all wooded right here. Mm -hmm. Really, there's very little lawn. A little small patio right here, and there's a little horse. I mean, I'm sorry, is uh, dog pen. But not a lot of grass on the property. Mr. Chair, I guess my only concern would be just to um, demarcate the 30 foot no touch boundary. It looks like they're completely out of it, so I have no problem with the construction as proposed. What sort of demarcation uh, would you propose? Well, as we usually recommend, dropping some boulders along it, dropping the demarcate that uh, would slow somebody down before they break it off into the well. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, I could see demarcating the boundary over by the house, um, not over where the septic system is going to go. I mean, you're not going to get encroachment over by the septic system. That's far from the house, separated by uh, trees. That's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. House, the, the limit of development is already the edge of the wetland, and where they are taking down, I mean, basically, it's um, they're taking down all the trees between the roadway and the 30 foot no touch zone. I, I think that we should have at least something in there just to demarcate that's the limit of work moving forward. I haven't been on site um, where the hay bales are proposed adjacent to the house. The wetland uh, is it is it uh, all uh, low plant species or is it open water? Is it uh, mostly low plant species? So okay. it's like for yeah. what were you? Asking? I'm just wondering if there's trees there where we could put uh, markers or something like that. To Medallions. Yeah, we can put some markers. You know, on like some four by four posts or something. Would, would four by four posts work for you? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, just some demarcation okay. that's on there. Something that's fairly permanent. Okay. As, as we've done with others. Consistent. I like that. Yeah, yeah we have these metal, metal medallions in the, in the office. Mm -hmm. Into that. Any other questions for commissioners? Uh, Mr. Chairman, would we, yes. with regard to placing the markers, have that noted in the uh, order? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then for the. Yeah, you know, I have a section. I have a demarcation section that's written in the boilerplate that all I need to do is fill okay, in. Okay, perfect. Thank you, ma'am. No other questions from commissioners? Any questions from the or comments from the public? Uh, seeing none, I will accept a motion for um, approval of a notice of intent for the septic system as proposed with the stipulation that the uh, 30 foot buffer will be uh, demarcated with um, four by four posts, uh, periodically spaced every 30 to 50 feet. Um, and the posts will have wetland mark markers um, attached. So moved. Second. Roll call. Uh, if, if I might ask you to just change that um, motion, the 30 foot no touch actually goes through the center of the house. I would, I would propose that we mark the edge of development as the boundary for the limit of work in the motion, not the 30 foot no touch. Do you take that as an amendment? So amended. Second. Motion is second. Roll call vote. Richard Birch. Aye. Bob Peace. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. 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 Jackson. And I vote aye as well. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Stay warm. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yes, you too. Next time, just look up and we'll start the eyes. Okay, that sounds good. We'll open our next hearing. Um, it's continued from a previous meeting pursuant to Master General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, in the Lunenburg Wetland 
by law section 335, the Conservation Commission will be holding a hearing on a request for determination by Peg Gorman of 66 Horizon Island Road for replacement of a collapsed retaining wall. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Brett Ramston, stonemasonry contractor, representing uh, Peg Gorm at 66 Horizon mm -hmm. Island Road tonight. Yeah, you forgot to sign a revised form. Can you just sign that? You got to click it. Click it. So, Mr. Ramston, I understand it's stated that already. we had a number of changes or updates to the plan that we were we requested at the last meeting. Can you just take us through plan. your uh, amended plan? Absolutely. That's the form. You asked for the form. Okay. okay. We can share this down. Yeah. Absolutely. One more. Two more. One for Todd. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. The original plan is all here with the wall and the measurements on the Mm-hmm. Um, what was added was some of the information regarding the property over here. Uh, you know, address, lot, 55, parcel number, and the acreage, mm -hmm. which was requested. Um, then I <coughs> also added this wall detail, detail up here in the corner. And as you, it shows pretty basic dimensions, but, um, the wall is already an existing three-foot wall, mm -hmm. and it's, as it says here, the new wall will be exactly the same height as the existing wall. Sure. Um, the construction of the wall shows the the batter of the wall, which is uh, one inch per foot, which is a it's a dry wall. I like mm -hmm. to have a, a good batter on the mm -hmm. back. Stronger on the back, of course. Shows the crushed stone footing with filter fabric behind the wall here. Um, and then it also shows that existing conditions has a crushed stone bed behind it. Um, I don't know the exact pitch of the yard there, but we're going to keep it the same. Mm -hmm. That won't change. And I will simply, whatever has to get estimated out, will certainly be put back in. Um, the top of the wall will end up at the same location uh, as the original wall, and of course we'll find like stone to add where we need to to finish it off, and mm -hmm. basically get it back to what it was before there was an issue. Any questions for commissioners on the updated plan, Rich? Did you have a chance to review the plan? I, I don't happen to see a copy of it. I know most of my um, concerns mirror Carl's concerns as far as just having enough documentation on there so that somebody else could go out on site with the plan and see what was going on and what was replaced. Yeah, I hadn't gotten any yeah, evidence yeah, or anything on that Jack, until I today. So. Um, this detail that, that Brett's added is, does that very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You mentioned just a detail. The, um, what did you call that pitch? I call it a batter. Batter. It's three inches per foot. Is that? Um, what it says? Actually, it was one inch per foot. That should be one inch per foot. One inch per foot, three inches max, because the yeah, wall's I, three I feet high. Okay. Well, I ask you. You said you said one. <laughs> right. So, uh, on the approved plan, we'll just want want you to update that just to know what the pitch will actually sure. be, or you know, after you can submit an as built, if you yeah. change it to one and a half or something like that, uh, to one foot, but. Yeah, I was pretty tired, but I <laughs> <laughs> the whole wall will be pitching three feet. At three um, inches, so, me. is the entire wall three feet, or is it the approximately wall. three feet? Um, is, is the it exposed? Four? It's three feet exposed all the way around. Three okay. Feet. Good question. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will be recusing myself from this vote, wherein that I've worked extensively with Aunt Peg and her insurance company. Mm -hmm as well as with Mr. Ramsden, who I have tremendous respect for. And at the same time, I, Matt, I haven't given you a check yet for the advertising because I haven't been here. I owe you a check for some. Yes, you do. I do. <laughs> so well, how much do I have? 
And for the public that's watching, making it clear the check is made out to the town of Lunenburg, it's <laughs> not made out to me. And you could have done that after. And yeah. thank you for your help, Jack. Thank you. Any other comments from commissioners? With that, I will, is this an RDA or a? It's an RDA. RDA, I will accept a motion for a negative three determination for the application at 66 Horizon Island Road. So moved. We have a motion, we have a second? Second. Roll call vote, Richard Bursch. Aye. Bob. Aye. Jack. Aye. Ken. Oh, excuse me, no, I, can't, I, can't, I can't vote. Remember, <laughs> <laughs> that's a trick question. It's like Simon says. I'm writing a check. Aye. Ken, aye. Carl. Aye. Aye. I vote aye as well. Thank you all. Thank you. Do you want to hold on to those? Or? Yeah, we'll give them to the fine. Mm -hmm. Lots of copies. Yeah, I got them. I got some fun. Well, actually, you've had fun. Matt, was it 65? 65. Next hearing, uh, continued from a previous meeting, pursuant to Master General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, in the Lindenberg Wetlands Bylaw, Section 335, Steve Powell of 155 Reservoir Road Realty Trust has filed a notice of intent for construction of a common driveway crossing for two single family lots at 41 and 47 Reservoir Road. He's got the, the plans mm -hmm. with him. Here's the original. You get the extra copy? Thank you. If you guys want the copy spread out, are you just going to refer to the diagram? I think Ms. Mercer you also usually should does a pretty good job. In the, in the cloud, too. So. Yeah. So at the previous hearing, um, it was requested that I provide more details of the actual foundations for the culvert. Um, so I. I had contact come in the office, went through all the details with them, he provided me pictures of the, the actual culvert foundation that we're proposing. Uh, it's the least impactful um, system that they provide, they make, they manufacture. Um, so it's, uh, it's called the Steel Express Foundation. And it was actually a good exercise to undergo Sorry. Because the previous culvert that I had specified, although it met the stream crossing standards. Brian, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you just sign the back of this and date it, please? Sure. Although it met the stream crossing standards, the actual installation excavation would have impacted the bank. It would have been restored, but in order to put the, the footing, which is two feet wide at the bottom, by one foot nine. So in order to excavate the two foot wide plus the over dig, uh, it would have actually dug into the bank. So I've upsized the culvert um, to the next size up, which I think is 15 foot. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I believe it's 15 foot 10 inches. 15 foot 10 inch wide total span. Um, so that the actual foundation of the culvert would be outside, at least a foot, I think a foot four, outside the actual bank. So mm -hmm. on the physical plan, I have notes on the, uh, the detail on the bottom left, which is the construction sequencing, how it would be installed. Um, so basically what we're planning to do is install a core log staked on the bank line. So where it's flagged, we'll have a core log staked. The excavation is another foot four. Outside of that, a uh, three foot wide dig. Um, you can do a three foot wide dig with these because they're manufactured off site. So all they do is establish the grade, which were two feet below grade, uh, two foot four, four inches of compacted crushed, um, stone. crushed stone underneath it for leveling. The material out here is, is pure sand and gravel, which we've, we've verified. Mm -hmm. uh, so it has the bearing strength for this specific installation. Um, so these steel forms are put in place, the culvert is placed on top of it. Um, and then the whole form, which I believe is the, the second picture you can see in the, 
your, your packet here. They just fill it with concrete. Mm -hmm. So it's all formed in place, poured. You don't have to over dig and form it with, um, with wood. Stuff, yeah. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a much simpler installation. Once that's installed, um, I mean, while they do this at the same time, they'll be doing the replication area. So they'll dig the replication area out. Then when they go to dig for the culvert, all the loam topsoil they'll use for the replication area. Uh, the culvert foundations go in, the culvert gets installed. Um, actually, just prior to they put the foundations in, they'll, they'll put in utilities, so they'll do the directional drilling um, or the jacking for the water main. Did, can you just talk about that for one second? Yep. I think it's a six inch on the plan. Did you, did you say the last time it was two No, inch? it's a two inch. They changed okay. it, so it's been changed okay. since. They originally we would expect a six inch right. because the so put a, hydrant out there, but that's a hydrant, but the property on the back side, there's another 52 acre parcel that has contamination on it. Okay. There was a plan initially to buy that and do a subdivision okay. road all the way I through. I just want to clarify this. Yeah, so it should be a two inch okay. spec. It's, it's it's a two inch on the plan. I must okay. have missed some of the detail. Okay. All right. So, um, and then once they put the foundations in <clears throat> in the culvert section, they backfill it and compact in six inch lifts with a retaining wall. Um, and and that's, you know, the sequencing is in a little bit more detail. I don't know if I read each one, I can go up to the board. Um, but that's the install. Um, according to Contact, <coughs> once the, the installation of this is typically a, a two day, you excavate for the, you excavate to subgrade, install the foundations, the culverts typically day two, fill it with concrete, they leave it a day to cure. And then just start backfilling the rest of the roadway. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I can go through, like I said, in more detail if you want the construction the sequence on the plan. Want the construction sequence, or are you satisfied that it's noted on the plan? And we can read it. Yeah. I'm satisfied with that. Me too. The only question, Chairman, the only question I had was something previous. The driveway is going to be tarred. Yes. And we were wondering what the incline was going to be. In terms of are we going to pick up some runoff from any kind of speed and is that kind of end up cutting a canal into a sensitive area? Mm -hmm. Yep. So the I believe the maximum grade. The maximum grade is right here in this location. I believe for about a, a 50 foot stretch, we had, I think it was up to an 8%. It was six, six or 8% was the maximum slope, just in this location. And we did this to minimize the amount of impact to the riverfront area. All right, how far here? So here's the, here's the crossing, a little hatch here that you can see right here. Yeah. Right here. So we have, you know, a scale of 50 feet, um, you know, maybe, maybe 60 or 70 feet. But right in this location, right about eighty percent green. Is there a chance we may see puddling at the base, or at the I mean, I, I, runoff that was cut a channel? I, I don't think you're going to get anything with cut a channel. The material out here is straight gravel, straight sand. When we've done perks out here. Everything was less than two minutes per inch. It's fast and important to hold the water one way. We do have, if you look at the cross section, for the full, uh, full driveway. It's. There are five foot shoulders on the road. So anything that goes off off the pavement, again, it's gonna have a five foot level shoulder. So okay. I don't anticipate any undercutting. And, and again, I understand your concern, but it is a, a residential driveway and not a, a, uh, a roadway yeah, where it's yeah. 24 plus feet. I know in the past we've had, we haven't asked residents to do a drop, uh, some work wrap along the downhill side of it to just slow everything down. In fact, we've been up to see a few different properties where they have. Now you're talking 50 feet or so, 8% grade. I would so certainly accept the condition if that's what you want. They have got some wood wrap on the side of it, and that downhill side? Yep. Yeah, and it's in this location, uh, you know, what we're looking at, where we're, we're actually above. We're, we're we're coming off we're coming off the, the crossing, yeah. the elevated crossing, meeting grade where it's you know it's 
It's not as steep there, but we steep enough to catch up. I know a good place you can get some crushed rock. That's what I'm saying. I don't mind that. <laughs> <laughs> <It's not playing. laughs> I, if you, during construction of the culvert, if you encounter any water in that excavation, what are you going to do with the pumped water? So, with what, the pumped water, <clears throat> um, dewatering wise, I kept the mill on the plan to do the, the excavation <coughs> during during no flow, low flow, and to mm -hmm. have conservation approve it, conservation agent approve it before the construction happens. Okay. Um, typically, with something like this, they would you would dig a sump, put a pump in to a pit or something mm -hmm. upstream, not upstream, but on dry land to let it infiltrate. And for something like this being only like a day, you know, a day excavation. Once it's open, it's <coughs> going to be a short-term uh, fix, but we've used dewatering bags. Where we have the soil we have now, mm -hmm. I would recommend just digging a sump, I'm just just a hole in the middle of the driveway within our disturbed area. Um, like I said, we couldn't keep water in the hole, and we've done all the perk tests out here. Mm -hmm. As fast as we dumped it in the hole, the water disappeared. So, um, you know, something on the upland side of the impact. Um, and that that's something that... The intent here is the owner is selling this. He already has a buyer. Mm -hmm. So once that's in the contractor's hands, you know, we can always give him direction, tell him what to do, but means and methods, you know, something we tell him to do could impact costs and whatever on his end. But I would, it could be easily in other conditions stating, you know, the contractor before he performs the work has to provide some sort of dewatering plan or sequencing for your approval before the work's done. And I think that's, that's certainly reasonable. I have a dewatering yeah. condition in the boiler I can mitigate, I can modify. Let's do that. Yep. Can I see that order that you guys signed up? I don't have it. It's okay. Can you that? Thank you. So, Excuse me, Mr. Katie. Yeah. I don't have any other questions. Commissioners, have any questions? <coughs> Rich, did you have any questions? Oh, you're welcome back and reviewing that researching that i appreciate it yep. it was it was a good exercise because i found out we would have impacted the bank and <laughs> figured out we needed a, a culvert about a foot bigger all right so condition number 40 that's normally in our local boiler the local portion of the order is under well development and dewatering and it says during well development or if any dewatering is required within 100 feet of wetlands pump it shall be directed into an on-site depression designed to settle out sediment and a direct flow away from the wetlands so as to prevent um, silt of resource areas from fine materials <coughs> discharged from the well. Prior to any implementation, the Conservation Commission agent must approve the system. All well construction and waste materials generated during construction shall be removed. So that covers like well drilling and something. That works for me. Yeah. Okay. And so it doesn't sound like it needs to be part of the motion since it's part of our basic boiler. It's part of our basic boiler to begin with. So. Okay. Um, My only suggestion would be at the time that we make the motion, we reference item number 40 as dewatering as it would pertain to the construction of the crossing, just so there's no confusion where it just states well development. Agreed. Seeing no other questions from commissioners, any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none. I will uh, accept the motion to improve, to approve, does this say, uh, yeah, notice of intent. To approve the notice of, of intent for construction of the common driveway crossing for two single family lots at 41 and 47 miles of Fuller Road, noting that condition 40 will be applicable um, to the construction of the culvert crossing. With regard to dropping the riprap along the low port of the driveway driveway on the on the low side just to slow it down i don't know how you phrase that but yeah, yeah adding the wrap in yeah. the area where the driveway exceeds uh six percent yep someone gonna make that so motion we have a motion you have a second second roll call vote richard birch aye bob Pease. aye jack rabbit aye ken jones aye carl luck aye katie childs aye. and i vote aye as well Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much. You too. <coughs> we'll open our next hearing. <coughs> Carl. 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 Continued from the previous meeting, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Lunenburg Wetland Bylaw, Section 335, Miles Jenkins has filed a notice of intent for the repairing of three retaining walls and a replacement of steps at 72 Hemlock Drive. May I have that folder? Sure. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Ramsey, welcome back. back. <coughs> Again, Mr. Ramsey. Understand. In this case, I'll be representing the Jenkins residence on 72 Hemlock. And we have some fresh, new, beautiful fence overlaid the existing conditions plan. Um, which I have to say, I, I emailed you guys a copy of that today, yeah, and I also got yeah. them on the cloud. Too. Yeah. Would you like one right now? That we have? I'd love one, one for the file, too. So it's, uh, it's actually very nice to see this sitting directly over the existing conditions. Um, as requested, there's elevations above and below the wall in many locations, top of wall, bottom of wall. Um, it's, um, it's my drawing, but brought to uh, Mm -hmm. S specific uh, pull points by the engineers. Uh, I'd like to bring your attention to two things. The detail, uh, the typical stone retaining wall detail on the rough side of the drawing. Pretty straightforward. Um, this shows it at four feet and of course Wherever the wall is shorter, it's the same construction, but shorter. Um, being a, um, a cemented stone wall, um, it's going to be about a quarter inch per foot better on this particular wall. Um, also with a crushed stone footing, um, <coughs> the majority of the walls will end up at 1.5 feet wide at the top. Um, there may be the lower wall, uh, there may be a couple of walls where the it's only a foot wide at the top, but it'll still be the same construction. It would only be a foot wide, low enough to be able to put the pavers right behind it, you know, where it gets too tight. But it really wouldn't change anything as far as construction. And I also have, um, copies for everyone a uh, printed construction sequence uh, to hand out but I didn't know if there was any questions on this first questions from the commissioners I think it you know from what we talked about last time I think it shows the way I look at it, it shows everything we asked for mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Rich you had a comment I happen to meet with the uh, town's attorney to get an idea of exactly how grandfather works in the Wetlands Protection Act. Uh, it was his, not his opinion. He stated that the Wetland Protection Act does not have any grandfathering to it. Uh, and I will read uh, as it states, no person shall remove, build, dredge, or alter any bank, riverfront area, Freshwater wetland, coastal wetland, beach, dune, flat marsh, meadow, or swamp bordering on the ocean. 
or any estuary, creek, river, stream, pond, or lake, or any land under said waters or any land subject to tidal action, coastal storm, flowage, or flooding, other than in the course of maintaining, repairing, or replacing, but not substantially changing or enlarging an existing and lawfully located structure. At this time, there is no other wall other than the one that is currently standing there. We may have remnants of a foundation, but there is no wall there that exists today that can be repaired, replaced, or maintained under the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, in putting that wall in place, now that we have an engineered plan, all of the construction is within the floodplain. All of the uh, work will be in the high water and in the wetland as it's shown on the plan. I don't have access to the D, but I believe the property line ends at the high water mark. So this entire wall is being built on the lake bed owned by Hickory Hills Landowners Association. And in putting this wall in the location of the ancient foundation, you are clearly filling the wetland, altering the wetland. You have a three foot foundation going under the wall that will protrude farther out into the wetland and farther out into the lake bed than is shown on the plan. So personally, I don't see how any of the construction that is not clearly above the high water mark or inside the high water mark is allowable under the Wellness Protection Act. The replacement repair of the existing wall as it sits today is clearly covered under the Wetlands Protection Act, but unfortunately I don't think the proposed wall out into the lake bed in the area of the remnant foundation is allowable under the Wetlands Protection Act. Mr. And Matt was yep. present, so I mean he can also expound on the attorney's opinion. That's essentially what he said was what town council would say. Right. Well, I, I guess the whole contention of that, Rich, and I, I guess it would have been nice if um, uh, I was able to talk to him. I, but I, I guess the whole contention is that the existing wall, which shown in the pictures, foundation, which extends above the ground. So if it's above the ground, it's also a wall, um, still remains in place. So what you're you describe as remnants uh, of possibly being a wall. I describe as it's still a wall, largely intact. And if it's largely intact, my contention is that it would be allowed under the Wetland Protection Act. Uh, I, I agree with Todd in this matter. I, miss, I, miss Again, I guess I'm not privy to pictures that you have of a wall. But the foundation that's currently there is clearly underwater. It is clearly outside of the high water mark. So irregardless, it is still in the lake bed, not owned by the applicant. If I, I still don't see, other than what little foundation is there, the remnants. I mean, that's existing. There's no other wall there existing today. So I'm not sure how we can take existing to mean anything other than what is there today or has reasonably been removed or damaged recently. I mean, the wall that is the currently existing wall has clearly been there for decades. I mean, we're not talking about days, weeks, months, or even a year. We're talking decades. If I may. I claim that, that what is there is existing, I don't think is within the definition of existing. If I may. So I, I mm -hmm. unfortunately respectfully disagree with uh, your opinion, your your view of it, Todd. Okay. Uh, if I may, yes. um, I would like to revisit some of these pictures mm -hmm. that clearly shows that the what he's saying about the old wall is actually still an existing wall. It's retaining a minimum of two feet of the bank. 
And in these pictures, you can see the high water mark is barely above the old wall through the majority of it. it um, almost none of what we're calling the new wall is under the water line. Very little of it is. So the, the, rem the remaining structure of the original wall is still holding. Um, and this wall was simply built on the back of an existing wall. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pease. Uh, I'd like to note that um, Mr. Dwyer is a, a certified engineer um, who deals in uh, retaining walls um, and has some expertise in this matter. And uh, I have a lot of respect for his opinion. Mr. Abbott. Um, basically, if you build a fence, right, on what you believe is a property line, and that clearly was back then, and it was accepted by the association, that became essentially the property line. I do not believe that because you decided the, the fence crumbled that you moved yours back a couple feet, that you've surrendered the right to that property for the, the, for the, you know, the part where the wall was still there. When I did the inspection, inspection to them with them. Uh, it was clearly those rocks weren't randomly placed. Mm -hmm. They were had an order. They, they followed a line. And it, I, I viewed that as actually part of the foundation of the other wall that had been built. So therefore, that became part of the whole wall system. If we decide to reconfigure it, we generally don't let them move, but the wall system started at that row two feet three feet off of wherever it was right right there. So I would look at that as an entire wall system that could be reconfigured. And honestly, my first concern was that somebody would be trespassing on the lake. In fact, that's not the case. And if you look at other pieces of data that would suggest the steps couldn't have been there, and yes. other pieces, that it would indicate the there was something there, something occurred, my fence fell down, I went just stuck it a couple feet back. So I will be, because I do believe it's a wall, but at the same time, I also have a relationship with Brett. He's a good friend of mine, a really good friend. And uh, I don't want to this ever create the perception that the because wall. he's my friend that I would vote for this. Yeah. So therefore, I will recuse myself from the voting. Stones are low. But I can't uh, believe it's a wall. This is all a wall. Mr. Chairman? Yes, uh, Mr. Locke. Yeah, I, I, I as, as Jack did, uh, have visited this site twice. Um, I, don't, I, I don't, I certainly don't question your credentials. Um, it certainly is, though in my mind, a bit of a judgment call uh, whether or not those rocks used to be a wall that was the same height as this wall. Um, but I think, that, I think I'd be hard pressed to argue that there is, that they are a wall today. Uh, there certainly is a wall there today. It's very clear that that um, wall is a wall, not the pile of rocks. And grant grandfathering is a slippery slope, and I think we need to be very, very careful. Um, in order to be grandfathered, what I heard, and I felt in my, my heart before I just heard that, was that the structure has to be there in order to be grandfathered. Mm -hmm. And it's all a judgment call in my judgment that doesn't look like a wall anymore. It may have well have been one at one point, and it may, may have been, it may be the foundation of an ancient wall, um, but it's not a wall today. And I think if, it, in order to apply grandfathering, uh, which I would love to do, it would be a lot simpler here, um, but I think we have to, um, at least in our hearts and our conscience, uh, believe that what is there, um, what is being grandfathered is there today. And I don't, and I see a wall there today, but it's not the pile of rocks, it's the wall that's been there for decades um, so I I would be um, I would be against okay this proposal. Bob uh, it appears to me that the um, main concern uh, with this application is uh, the wall and uh, the application needs to get four votes uh, we've heard from two members who are not comfortable with the wall. We've heard from two members who are. 
Um, I would urge us to hear from the other two members <laughs> to see, you know, where they stand. That's on, a great on suggestion. So that uh, we can decide how we're going to move forward. Yeah, I mean, as stated at previous meetings, I, I believe that the remnants that are there were the foundation and the remains of a, a previous wall. And in what um, Rich read, it can be replaced in kind. So I would be in favor of, of the plans as presented with the evidence, the photographic evidence that's been presented. Katie? I mean, um, I'm no expert. I have not made a site visit. I've seen the pictures. To me, it appears that there are remnants of a wall. There's base of a wall there. And I will see to Todd's expertise. He knows definitely more than I do on the subject. And I value his opinion. I believe it's a wall. Mr. Chair, just to, uh, to ask again, because I don't, I can't see what um, I wasn't in the meeting and see what um, Rich is, is talking about. But I thought what I heard, and maybe I heard wrong. I thought what I heard was, in order to be grandfathered, the structure has to still be there. Am I, am I misinterpreting that? Because I don't think so. I, my content, my, my contention, Carl, is that the structure is there. Is still there. I now, I, one thing I think we should note is that the limit of excavation where you're calling the edge of a wall has to be reviewed by the agent. I think that's a condition, so you're not going to where the portions of wall that have toppled over and out onto the bank aren't counted as, as the face of the wall. We mm -hmm. need it staked on the plan, and then our agent needs to review that in the field to make sure. And if he has a question, he can reach out to you know uh, one of the commissioners to come sure. take a look the only thing I'd be concerned with on this would be that right now this is below the limit of the marked floodplain I would say the top right here is right at high water so I think it extends well, I'm not talking about high water I'm talking about the FEMA zone a which is marked on his plants right okay which is exactly the same point as the high water mark Right. Look at it. It's the same line. But it looks like it's inside of the wall. That's. But. It's just a little line. Yeah. So it looks like it's on the land side of the wall in this drawing. I guess it depends. Well, we have a leader at one edge at the corner. It could be defined better along the entire face to be out to the edge of the existing <coughs> wall. I would also like to bring your attention briefly. Um, if I might just clarify that, if you're talking about the, the remnants of the old wall, it does state on the plan that the stones below the water line are the remains of the old wall. So if the engineers are stating that what is left there is below the water line, which would put it out into the FEMA floodplain. And just a second, just as Carl had questioned it, it does state, other than the course of maintaining, repairing, or replacing, but not substantially changing or enlarging an existing and lawfully located structure. Again, I'm not privy to the pictures that you have, but do you have enough information presented to see what we're talking about or others are saying was the existing wall so that we have a comparison to what is proposed? to what was supposedly there prior? Uh, I'm not. Ba based on my site visit, and as easily seen in the photographs, the base of the uh, existing foundation that uh, had some of the stones above it altered. Um, so that historic foundation which supports the wall um, toe of that foundation extends 18 to 24 inches off the face of the up, upper portion of the wall. So I guess just to clarify, you have pictures of the wall that was sitting on the remnants of foundation? It, the, I consider that foundation to be an intact foundation or the intact structure. That foundation supporting that entire wall. And earth and maintaining the earth behind it correct and if, if you are if you are surmising that there was an existing wall there it is an existing wall so if if, if 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 you have a footing excuse me 
no, excuse me, Rich. Uh, if you have a footing and that footing is spread over the earth, it extends out. That's what this footing does. It extends out and supports the wall. There may have been more stones before it at, at some point, but I consider the entire foundation intact. But, but again, if, so to not be in violation of the act, how are we proving that what is going back there, depth, height, and breadth, does not change or enlarge what was, what, we, we have no point of reference to move forward with permitting the, the wall, because we have no point of reference as to what was there other than what we can see with our eyes for the foundation. I mean, uh, that, I think that's exactly what we have. What we, we can certainly replace the foundation that's there because that's existing, but there's nothing else on site. I mean, there's some remnants of some rocks that were a foundation. There's, there's nothing to support that what we are proposing is not a substantial change or an enlargement of what may have been there. Understood. And Rich, if you have access to email, I just sent you a picture of the picture that Brett has presented. Oh, we seen that picture? Okay. So, I, I, Mr. Chairman, I, I think the subtle difference in the, in the members' minds is um, accepting that, the, that there's a foundation there. It's hard to tell where it is to begin with because, I, you know, it's slightly irregular because it's built with stone. Yeah, but it certainly isn't the extent of the stones, right? It isn't way up there. No. No. And it's so, how did the walking on site. You could easily see foundation stones that were level. Then you saw stones that had fallen off the wall and out onto the bank. And I guess the part, clearly evident part of the problem I think we're having is we haven't really. To stay with the foundation for a minute. Mm -hmm. We haven't really documented where we believe that foundation was. We believe, can someone show me some measurements of where the foundation was as we go down here? Yeah, you know, uh, well, I, I, I think on the plan, the foundation um, is noted along the front, and I would generally agree, as I noted earlier, it's 18 to 24 inches from the face of the upper portion of the structure. So, if, if we accept that there's a foundation there, we accept it's 18, 24 inches, there's still a very fundamental difference, I think, between accepting that there was a wall there that was 18 mm -hmm. to 24 inches out, and that there is a wall there. And I think the grandfathering says it has to be there, not was there. Because um, if we get into people proving what was there, I mean, I have pictures from my cottage from the 50s. I, I'll come in and put in a wreck for a, a, a huge cement wall that used to be out in the lake. But I don't think, I would never do that because that's not, I don't think that's the intention of grandfathering, mm -hmm. just to be able to prove that something was ever there and be able to replace it. You know, we're, we're, trying, to, we're, we're trying to be consistent, you know, mm -hmm. not, not punitive. So I, I have a couple you know, comments. I, in with I, right? you know, I have a couple comments then, then Bob. One. Um, we've had other cases where we've examined walls and gone out and seen uh, timber railroad ties out in the water and had to discern that was where the face of uh, an old wall was. And then come back, there was no wall there. Right. And, and we, I believe this was a unanimous decision on a repair to move the wall back that had filled wet and, and bring the face back to this old historic timber line that was in the water that wasn't nearly as substantial as what we're looking yeah, at here. I, I agree. I was in those meetings, and I can picture what, the one you're probably talking mm -hmm. about that we did. I think we were wrong now that we're learning what the grandfathering definition is. So uh, just because we did it before doesn't make it right. What we do forward is what's more important. Good point. Bob. Um, I think everyone's position on this issue was clear. Um, I think we're repeating ourselves. Um, and uh, I urge us to move on to other topics. Chairman, one last. My, 
Well, then you I shouldn't participate in the discussion. You, you shouldn't be participating oh, at all, Jack. Okay, then. Uh, You're going to recuse yourself. I said I would in uh, terms of voting. So that's an abstain. Interesting. Okay, abstain. Is that I viewed, I had the same discussion, Carl, in terms of, I viewed this as an integral part of that other wall. And it was in it essentially it flowed together and it looked like there was something. But I, I agree, this is a really hard line to draw. It's very thin. But so, you would, so you would argue that there, there's still a wall there? Uh, yes. That that's part of both walls. That is part of it. Part of both walls. Okay. Uh, any other comments from the commission? Seeing none, any comments from the public? Um, if there are no comments, I will uh, accept a motion for a notice of intent. No. 472 Hemlock Drive for um, the proposed uh, grading and earthwork and, and new walls uh, at this property. With the um, stipulation uh, that uh, the face of the wall is to be staked um, and approved uh, by the wetland agent, no work is uh, to begin before it's uh, approved by uh, the wetlands agent. So moved. And the, uh, the sequence of work we added to make sure that's the order of conditions. Yes. And that the sequence of our work be added to the conditions, order of conditions. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion, second. Uh, let's do a roll call vote. Richard Burke. Katie Childs? Aye. What did, what did Carl say? I didn't hear He said no. Okay. No. Ken Jones? Aye. Bob Pease? Aye. I vote aye as well. Motion passes. We're all set. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of your comments. Do you have one? Yeah, you have one? Matt? And I respect everyone's opinion as well. Good luck, hurry up. It's cold out there. <laughs> it's cold out there. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good night, Brad. I did want to get everyone a copy of the sequence. But Thank you. That was also requested. Yes, Rich. Um, well, you had commented on me meeting with the town attorney. It was at the publicly advertised doodle sessions. Yeah, no, that's I fine. Wanted to make sure that, well, I just want to make sure that all members are getting the invitations to the doodle sessions that are sent out by the town manager. That yep. They are for all members to attend if they need to. Agree. One thing that I think may be useful in future meetings and, and we had done this previously is whenever we were going to um, consult with uh, the town attorney um, we, we'd often you know note that in the previous meeting prior yeah no sure to come up when I was discussing it and it was just he didn't offer an opinion it was just the plain text from the Wellness Protection Act that sure. I read. So we didn't offer any other opinion other than do what the law says. Yep. Actually, I'll take that for that second copy. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Rich. Mr. Chairman, I would also like to compliment our chairman for taking that up opportunity to meet with the lawyers and bring us a new piece of information with regard to the interpretation of the Wetlands Protection Act. Agreed. And, uh, that was, Rich, that was good work and thank you very much. That was very productive. Thank you, Jack. I'll take those. I should put them in the front. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, our next hearing is continued from a previous meeting pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Town of Lunenburg Wetlands Protection and Municipal Bylaws, public meeting on a request for determination for Mickey Dutton uh, for the trimming 
and some removal of brush at 54 Pine Acres Drive. Mr. Pease. Um, I recalled uh, in a past meeting uh, hearing our agents say that the applicant uh, was elderly and uh, couldn't drive at night and uh, couldn't come to a meeting and that we still haven't you know heard anything about you know where the brush is that she wants wants to remove um so um uh i volunteered to reach out to the applicant and see you know uh, you know was there a time when you know we I, I or somebody else could go out you know and see you know exactly you know what is, she, is it that she wants to remove you know maybe take pictures for the rest of the commission i think that's a good you know one. do a site visit um I had tentatively set up uh, Friday morning to go out, and I was going to ask anybody else to come along who wanted to come, uh, but my grandchildren's uh, concert was rescheduled because of the <laughs> closing. So uh, uh, now I got tentatively have a Sunday afternoon. Uh, and in speaking with uh, Mickey on the phone, uh, she said all the brushes along the causeway, uh, you know, which is basically basically it was an island, and you have a man-made causeway out there, and uh, there's brush on both sides of the driveway and the brush is coming into the driveway and that's what she's talking about um, so um, I don't know if, uh, you know maybe we want to you know and she's very hard to get a hold of and very hard to um, schedule a time to meet with her sure. um, so uh, you know if anybody else wants to participate or else wants to be notified you know uh, when I actually do uh, pull it off um, I'd be happy to do that, uh, but um, right now I think we have to continue the uh, hearing to ne next next uh, meeting. But I do think, you know, in this case we should reach out and. and uh, yeah, great. Uh, I, I, um, I, I, that's great, and it's it's good, Bob, to uh, to offer that. Uh, if you could contact me, I'd like to come down sufficiently before football kickoff. Be great. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, Patriots, the game was moved to Saturday, so. Uh, oh, all right then. Uh, I'm free. So, so, so Sunday, Sunday is I'm good. Free. So. Uh, yeah, maybe just send an email out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll send an email yeah, out. Be here. great. If it actually is going to come off, I'll send an email out to everybody. All right, hold on a second. Right. Let's see. Before kick off. <laughs> <laughs> I'd make a motion we continue. Second. To the next meeting yeah. at the Ritter Building. Or It'll be here actually on the 15th of January. Our first Wednesday would be New Year's Day. I don't think anyone's going to be here. Yes. What is that? <laughs> second. Motion second. Any other public comment? Seeing none, uh, roll call vote. Richard Birch. Aye. Katie Giles. Aye. Carl Luck. Aye. Ken Jones. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. Bob Pease. Aye. I vote aye as well. We'll open our next hearing. Um, continued from a previous meeting. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and Section 239 of Lindenburg General Bylaw, uh, Wetland Bylaw, DPW has filed a notice of intent for replacement of culverts at Sunset Lane and Northfield Road. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we're going to have to continue that to the 15th. The uh, still looking for an engineer to take over the project. Um, and DPW Super has been a little busy with the uh, Snowstorm and road, road clearing. Someone make that a motion? So moved. Second. Motion, second. Roll call. Vote. Richard Birch. Aye. Katie Giles. Aye. Carl Luck. Aye. Ken Jones. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. Bob Pease. Aye. I vote aye as well. Continued from a previous meeting pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Town of Lindbergh Wetlands Protection and Municipal Bylaws, a public meeting on a notice of intent by Nancy Bell for replacement of an existing retaining wall at 51 Fire Road 19. I still have not received the documents from her that we asked her for. Very good. Uh, I'll accept a motion to continue to January 15th. Before, before we do that, do we have some kind of strategy for closure on this? You know, and, and um, uh, this has been going on a long, long time. Well, there's just some minor work that she has to do, but um, I believe it was our associate member, Mr. Viviano, that actually came up with the documents that we approved of with some changes that were needed. He hasn't been around to be able to make those changes. He is back in town now. 
so I can get him to you know get those changes in before the next meeting. But he was away for quite a while, which was part of the holdup. Okay. Did someone make that motion? I think Ken did. Did I? To continue the 15th? Yes. A motion, second. second. <laughs> Roll call vote, Richard Birch. Aye. Aye. Katie Childs. Aye. Carl Lutz. Aye. Ken Jones. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. Bob Pease. Aye. I vote aye as well. We don't have no business next. Yep. Next on the agenda, we're going to go to new business. Um, the update on the conservation restrictions, uh, Settler Solar. Still have a sign issue. Next chair. Good evening. I'm attorney Bowen representing the applicant with me is Stefan from Nexamp Solar. Hi, good evening. And Caroline from Beals and Thomas. From Beals and Thomas, the engineer. Mm -hmm. So um, we're here uh, to update you on the conservation restriction for 994 Northfield Road. Uh, we're also looking for some action from you uh, to preliminarily approve the documentation or at least give us some kind of uh, a agreement in principle. Uh, the way this process works is uh, it also has to be approved by the state, which could be a, a lengthy approval process. So we're anxious to get that going. Uh, just to back up a little background, as you may be aware, uh, next amp has a special permit to construct a solar array at 994 Northfield Road. As a condition, one of the conditions to that special permit, uh, they're required to have this conservation restriction in place before they can go live, which is anticipated to be sometime next year. So mm -hmm. we want to get this moving so that this doesn't end up holding anything up. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure exactly what you have and what the Commission has reviewed, but there are primarily two documents. Mm -hmm. uh, one is on the cloud, by the way, guys, if you want to flip through them. One is the conservation restriction itself, uh, which is a legal document of 18 pages uh, plus a, a plan that's attached to it. Uh, the other document is the baseline documentation, uh, baseline documentation report, uh, which was prepared by Beals and Thomas, which you should also have received uh, a copy of. Now, just so you guys know, um, I did review the baseline document, and it appears to me to be accurate and complete. Great. Mm -hmm. So, and with respect to the conservation restriction, which is really my, my piece of this puzzle, uh, I have uh, forwarded it to Matt, who forwarded it on to Adam Costa. Adam Costa did make some comments on it, uh, most of which, if not all of which, uh, have been adopted. Uh, and uh, I have a, a new version uh, which I sent to him a couple of days ago, and unfortunately I have not heard back from him yet. Uh, but I'm happy to share that with the, the uh, mm -hmm. commission. So the print copy that we have here tonight, is that the, the thing that you sent Adam, or was that the original? I don't know what you got. Uh, so I'm assuming, I'm assuming that it's... It was the uh, last one you sent me. Oh, okay. So it it is... It is almost the same as this then. I think the only, the last one I sent you still had four issues that were unresolved with Adam Costa. Right, and I believe you guys, are, you and changed the language that resolved those issues and you're just waiting to get confirmation from Adam. Correct. So what you have is almost the same as this. I have removed the red lines in what you have for a final version, which mm -hmm. I can sh share with all of you. I think I have enough copies for everybody here uh, and and the the only the only issue that may not appear in print in the old redline version was an issue that I raised with Adam Costa by email 
uh, which does appear in my final draft that I'm giving you here tonight, and that is the, the property owner also wanted to restrict hunting on the property. He does not want to allow any hunting there. Uh, not that I know whether it would have been allowed or not allowed there in the first place, mm -hmm. but that language which I told Adam Costa about has been inserted into the, the version that I provided you here tonight as item number 10 in the uh, excluded uses. I can show you where that is. It's on page, page 3. Item number 10 in the prohibited acts and uses. Other, other than that, uh, what's in front of you is virtually identical to what you were previously provided with, except that it has the red lines removed that were in the document, the, the comments that were in mm -hmm. the document that you were provided with. Uh, so uh, I'm still waiting to hear from Adam Costa that he has blessed this, but it is, with the exception of the insertion of the, the no hunting language, exactly what he had requested. So I'm confident in saying that, that legally speaking, this document is okay with us, okay with town council. Uh, it also has been vetted by the property owner, and there are two mortgages on the property, and the lenders have to subordinate their interest to this conservation restriction. They have also reviewed this document and ap approved this document. So a lot of eyes have already looked at this before it even goes to the state. Uh, so uh, I don't know if you have any questions for me about the conservation restriction. If not, uh, Beals and Thomas is here to answer any questions that you might have about the baseline documentation. Any questions from commissioners? Jack. I, I noted that there was a restriction with regard to motor vehicles on uh, usage on the property. Correct. And the, uh, at the same time, there were trails running across. It's been the practice of this commission to allow a snowmobile to use the, the trail only to traverse off to another location. And we allow that primarily because the ground's frozen, we're not tearing it up. And are we locking ourselves out of allowing that? And that, by the way, this is the same group that does all the maintenance on the trails in town as well. Would would that be allowable? Or why do they stay on the trails? I I, I have two comments. Uh, first, uh, the the comment that it does restrict snowmobile use was actually made by your town council, which was leading me to believe until this moment when you just said that, that it's something that the town wanted. Uh, second comment is uh, the property owner does not wish to allow it. Okay. Uh, so that's why it's that's why it's in there at, at this moment. That's why it's in there that way. Well, it's probably why town council made that statement because he probably knew the property owner didn't want it wasn't didn't want to allow it so we had to differentiate or he had to differentiate that because we have historically allowed for it so that, that could be I don't know what conversations Adam may or may not have had with the, the property Spe owner I don't speak, know speaking for myself if the property owner would allow it um, it would be more consistent you know with what we do on all our other conservation lands uh, you know if, if snowmobiling was allowed and i don't represent the property owner so i can't speak okay. for the property owner i i represent nexamp who is leasing the property for the solar array uh the the property owner is representing himself uh i only know that from a conversation that i had with him uh, his concern, and again, I don't want to speak for him, but his concern is with the proximity to the golf course, and I guess there have been issues in the past. Uh, so at, at present, that is his stated desire. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I might. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, one thing, just to keep in mind that this is and will be private property, even after the restriction is in place, the restriction is such to control development and the use of the property. So if, if the 
current owner is not willing or is not interested in having snowmobile use on a property. That's I would good. imagine A, that that is consistent with how the property had been used. And B, I don't know if it's necessarily within our area to try to put what uses we use on town property onto the private property owned by somebody else, not the town. That's a good Number point. One. Number two, I had just um, emailed the attorney, Adam Costa, because Matt and I did get a preliminary copy, but due to open meeting law, we couldn't um, give it to all members. Uh, my only concern with the no snowmobiling and no hunting on the property is that it remains the responsibility of the property owner to police that and does not become the responsibility of the town to ensure that no snowmobiles are on the property and no hunters are on the property. So that would be my only concern with uh, the no hunting and no snowmobiling, which again is private property and they're well within their rights to exclude those activities. And, and uh, th thank you, Mr. Ch and Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I, again, I'm not the town's lawyer. Uh, I am a lawyer, just not your lawyer. Uh, and uh, my my observation would be, though, that it's private property, and and policing it remains the responsibility of of the private property owner. Uh, but I'll let your town council tell you that. Well, it, the, the conservation restriction belongs to the property owner. We are the holders of the restriction, so we're the monitoring party. So what would wind up happening is that the owner would be responsible for policing the activities, and we would tour the property with the owner on a yearly basis to ensure that he's maintaining the meets and bounds of the agreed restriction. Sure. And, I mean, I personally don't have an issue with what he wants to disallow on his own property that he's putting a restriction on my own personal opinion in dealing with conservation restrictions over the years considering the nature of the project and the fact that the land is sensitive and the fact that we currently have had some issues with construction on your property we just got three reports of erosion in the last week that are coming under control um, that it, it is incumbent upon us to make sure that this restriction continues and goes smoothly so that we can hold the rest of this property. Mm -hmm. And by the way, um, Bills and Thomas, you did a very good job on that baseline document. It was very thorough, complete. I walked the property myself. I did not have to walk it reading that report. It was very well done. Okay. So, and I heard you're looking for an engineer for the other project. Hmm? You, you mentioned earlier that you were looking for an engineer for the other project. <laughs> just, just an, just an observation. Any other comments from commissioners? Um, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm a little confused with the process. We seem to have an agreement that we're <coughs> looking at here that isn't represented by <laughs> the attorney sitting at the table. From, is that true? Or I, I'm not. I'm no, the the, I'm representing Next Amp, uh, and the conservation restriction is being shepherded through by Next Amp as part of their agreement with the property owner. In developing this entire project they've agreed to assume responsibility for that but I am not the attorney for the property owner and working out the conservation restriction was part of our approval the conservation restriction was a condition on our approval yes yeah, no, oh, I absolutely agree with that and I'm, I'm all behind this I'm just confused as to what questions to ask who because um, <laughs> the, the property owner is giving us the restriction they're not at the table but so the but I'll ask happy with this document so, right. my, so my question is, whether in your ballpark or not, but you are a lawyer, so I'm sure you can answer it. I'll try. Um, so I'm not familiar with these. If the property owner ever wants to undo this, how does he do that? What what methods does he have to undo this? undo this? Can't. Once it is yeah. done, it's a permanent it's restriction. In perpetuity. Okay, thank you. With an in perpetuity <coughs> restriction, you'd have to go, it'd have to go like town meeting. Then it would have to go to the secretary, and it would have to be signed by the governor. And in order for that to happen, there would have to be uh, basically an equal parcel to take its place. Okay. Forget about it's it. Good. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments from commissioners? I, I agree. You know, I you know I made my remarks before, but I totally agree with everything you said. The property uh, owners totally within their right, you know, to mm -hmm. restrict use of snowmobiles and, you know, to say, say no honey. I, I totally agree with that. 
would anyone like uh, to make a motion to accept the conservation restriction once the applicant and the or not yeah the applicant and the or the applicant's representative and the town attorney come to agreement final agreement uh, I, 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 I would be asked uh, it's like to me this is I, I thought they were here tonight to take and see if we had any comments and tell them oh you know we think you're going in the wrong direction you know go in this direction because from here it has to go to the state and the state has to approve it and then any vote tonight to approve it would be a little premature but, the, but I could be totally wrong I'm looking you know but the state has to know that the town is on board before they will look at it so I guess what right. I'm looking for is a preliminary approval that the, the board uh, endorses a conservation restriction substantially similar to this draft proposal that's before you is that accurate yeah I would say that that is accurate and then after it comes back from the state it will be brought back um, to you guys and there is an affidavit at the end with the acceptance of it so this is more of a someone want to make I'll make a motion <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like he almost did that. <laughs> I had just a question Jack are we required to walk the property beforehand I believe our representative did, Matt. Mm -hmm. Matt did. Did he actually walk it or did he just walk it in your mind? No, I said looking at the baseline, I didn't have to go walk the property to verify the baseline. I've already been on the property. So I knew exactly what the baseline was referring to. But so yeah, I've walked the property multiple times. But, and you went to these particular points. I know I've been out there and walked them a lot. And I don't know how you ever going to find a hole in a stone. We did, but... Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if we have to formally do it and we have to formally record it, that's all. I'm Otherwise they may come back and say I'm not a surveyor. Yeah. Brendan Kibbing was. He went out and did the survey with us. Yeah, but we did that in lieu of because we were trying to save the town money in lieu of a professional survey, you know, of meets and bounds, you know, like on the lane property or on the McCann property. Uh, this is different, you know, they've got professional help. Um, the whole property's been surveyed, don't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we have surveyed plans on the property. We have the survey boundary of the, of the conservation restriction area. I've walked both sections of property, constructed and, and restricted. Um, I, I don't have any issues with the documentation. Okay. The photos do include the, the iron pins of do the they? conservation restriction. Okay. Yeah. I would make a motion that we um, approve the conservation restriction as presented as a draft and support the submittal to the state. Second. Motion, second. Roll call vote. Richard Birch. Aye. Bob Pease. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. Ken Jones. Aye. Carl Luck. Aye. Katie Childs. Aye. I vote aye as well. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. You got them to be unanimous. That doesn't happen. <laughs> That's a lot of paper. You want it? <laughs> You don't want Our second item under uh, new business, we have a letter uh, for use of trust funds to pay for a 21E for the McCann property. So I would refer you to the treasurer's report, um, which uh, I sent out earlier. Uh, just before the meeting uh, so the people you know participating remotely could look at it um, and you'll see that you know we, we, we started out with thirty four thousand four hundred and seventy six dollars in uh, our, this forestry account and it's down to twenty three thousand seven hundred and eighty eight dollars and this is the only money we have to make improvements um, and back in um, uh, 9 4 2018, uh, we used this money, we used uh, $1,735 of this money uh, to pay for the 21E uh, on the McCann property. Um, and in speaking with the town treasurer, um, she saw no reason why we couldn't use uh, the land acquisition trust funds uh, to fund that. Um, and so I'd like uh, to make a motion tonight uh, that we uh, 
uh, sign this letter tonight uh, that we take and authorize the use of trust fund uh, land acquisition funds uh, to pay for the 21E uh, for uh, the McCann property. So you want to reimburse? I want to reimburse the, the forest account from land acquisition account. Uh, Karen said she would support that. Um, I think we have to be careful to husband our forest money because it's the only money we have to make any kind of improvements. I would agree. Um, a motion? I would make that a motion. Uh, before we entertain the motion, any other comments? Rich, did you have something? Uh, the only comment that I do have, and it's just something to consider, the money in the revolving account is not an interest-bearing fund. So leaving the money in there does not garner us any interest or accrue any balance. The monies in the trust fund do garner interest. So it is a growth fund. So this is a smaller amount, so I'm not too concerned with it, but we just want to keep that in our heads that you know, just having all of the money sitting there may not always be the best alternative in spending the trust fund monies we are taking monies that do garner interest over time but as it is a small amount i am uh, in favor as long as the town's treasurer is in favor of the transfer and ken oh, richard gonna make that motion i would make that motion we transfer the $1,735 from uh, the trust fund back into the temporary rights revolving fund. Motion, do we have second? Second. Uh, before, we do, before we do that, Bob, do we have to designate which trust fund the, uh, no. the monies are coming out? No. Okay. We, not according to Karen. So she'll just take it out of whatever fund? She'll, she'll take it, you know, and the way uh, Matt wrote the letter is to come from uh, interest, as opposed to principal. So because we can't we can't touch the principal. I think it can only come from interest. It cannot come from principal. Well, actually, that's well, well, there's no point in getting getting into it now. So I won't disagree. <laughs> well, I'm just asking for. Well, well, Michael Gale, who used to be the chairman of the trust fund uh, 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 council, uh, said that you know. The trust fund commission um, didn't care, didn't you know, think that these little funds, these little little funds, like you know, they have a principal of ninety dollars, you know, needed to be preserved forever. Uh, but he's no longer chairman of the uh, trust fund committee. I don't think he's even on it anymore. So his opinion is kind of you know moot at this point. So it's time to move on and, and, and just get this done. I think, Mr. Bis. The Cyrus? That's the that one there is now chairman of the trust fund uh, commission. <laughs> How do you say it? Bezikarski. Bezik, thank you. Any other comments, Rich? None that I have. No. No other comments from the commissioners. No. Then uh, we have a motion and a second. Let's take a roll call vote. Rich Birch. Aye. Katie Childs. Aye. Carla. Aye. Ken Jones. Aye. Jack Abbott. Aye. Bob Pees. Aye. I vote aye as well. <laughs> All right, um, why don't we bring up enforcement? Do we have any uh, new enforcements for this week, Matt? Uh, 164 Page Street. Um, I did send the $100 fine. I have not yet received a response. Mm -hmm. And um, just on that, um, I thought we were going to request his presence at I did. another meeting. I did. I sent a letter out and a fine. And he was was it this meeting or the 15th? It was this meeting. And he's not here. And he's not here. So, so can we send him out a fine? For failure to appear. Right. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, can we make someone make that a motion? I move we uh, assess a $100 fine for failure to appear. Second. Motion, second. Any other comments? Do we know that he got the notification? Was it sent certified or returned? No, I, I send it certificate of mail. I don't send it certified because they never sign for it. Okay. So we don't know if he actually got the document or not. Well, I never got a bounce back, which I would have gotten by now. So it's assumed that they got right. the document. No, it was delivered. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion, second, roll call vote. Richard Birch. Aye. 
Katie Charles. Aye. Carl Luck. Aye. Ken Jones. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. Bob Pease. Aye. I vote aye as well. Um, <coughs> shouldn't have anything on Emerald Place Beach. Uh, Fire Road 12, any updates from the town? It's under investigation by the police. And we have this, this next one for uh, 228 West Street. Uh, yes. Um, <coughs> hearing for potential non compliance, 228 West Street. Uh, do we? All right. Pass that down to Katie for a signature. Thank you. You're probably a little nervous. My name is Alan Speck, and I'm at 228 West Street. Mm -hmm. uh, good evening. Um, what was the non compliance? This is the area in question where we went down to a property on Sunny Hill yeah. where we noted that there was um, flooding going into the wetland area oh. and it essentially appeared from a drainage system coming off of 228 West Street that was causing the excess water. Okay. Got it. So uh, when speaking to you guys about it, you said send the a uh, potential non-compliance letter out because yep. it was established. Yep. No, I remember. Soggy hillside. Very soggy. Yeah, is, uh, is that the <laughs> is that the new nickname for the place, Soggy Hill? Soggy. Yep. Yeah. So I moved to Limburg in uh, November 2016 and mm -hmm. bought the property, mm -hmm. and um, I've lived there ever since. So um, I did try to gather some of the stuff that I got from the builder, and I yep. actually have one set here. If you guys want to look, can at I it. take a look at them? Sure, absolutely. Um, so. I am just looking at the reality of it. So it's well, 0.93 acres. Mm -hmm. You know, it says sublot there. I'm talking to my rear neighbor. He had said that that originally was um, maybe a farm plot or a, mm -hmm. uh, or a you know, a pasture or something like sure. that. Sure. You know what I mean? Um, something that could easily absorb runoff. I guess. Yeah. I, don't know. Right. I mean, it's, you know, for what it's worth, my lot is at the bottom of West, mm -hmm. the West Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm which is, you know, what, 30, 30 yes. degree grade or whatever it is, you know what I mean? So, when I, I so I took the te this map, which is the um, septic design, do you know what I mean? Yep. Because it was the only thing I had that really showed the top of, the topographical elevation. No, it's perfect. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And from the top left, which is at West Street, yep. it's 160 feet. And at the bottom right is 120 feet. So it's 40 feet. Yeah, it, it, it's quite a difference in yeah. elevation. And I mean, it, and it looks to me, even the builder had said that when he built the spec home, because that's what I bought from him was the spec home, that he had to put all that fill in, the subjects on the fill in the front, mm -hmm. you know, and he just, you know, kind of dipped it out after it, you know what I mean? So, um, it is a steep block, you know? And because it's on the hill, and because the hill transposes both ways, from West Street as well as from the West Street Hill, you know, it's no that's there. just the mm -hmm. way the no water rolls. It's over here, I guess. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that's the stream came out. <coughs> I did yeah. take a couple of pictures. Um, so this is the home. You know, it's a quite empty nest. Retirement home, which is what it is. And, you know, that's the picture of West Hill, so you guys can see the grave, obviously, okay. you know. I took some pictures in November, when I first got the notice, mm -hmm. um, showing down the grave, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And these, I believe, are the two trenches that you guys were talking about. Mm -hmm. and for what it's worth. Those are those trenches for your leach field? No. What those were, it was, an, it was my own inspiration. It's the was. Mm -hmm. The perimeter drain came out of the foundation and just went right out the back of the hill. Mm -hmm. So, and after it rained, you know, for two or three days or even a week, it would still constantly be wet and wetting the backyard, especially sure. down that grade. Honestly, in my own, I, I honestly had the inspiration of making a self-watering raised bed garden. So all I did was put two, what I did was as I put two gravel trenches, 24 by 24, you know, ran that perimeter pipe down into it and then just covered it over because I'm figuring I was going to infill and, you know, do some... I, I lived in Harvard for 30 years. We had, like, a lot of high bush blueberries, high bush uh, raspberries. And since I've moved there, 
staring out at that empty lot. <laughs> I was trying to decide what to do with it. You know, plant a couple apple trees, do something. So that was the whole intent of that. Was. So your your raised beds really, from my view, while they're getting soggy, I don't think they were the problem. I think the problem from your description is the perimeter draining your foundation is causing sending a lot of water down that hillside. Well, and again, that's why I took these pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's interesting about this is so that's the picture from November. There's another picture in November showing the two trenches. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is the water's mainly coming from the side, not necessarily from down the hill. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I took these pictures last weekend. So if you think about it, we got an inch and a half of rain plus 20 inches of snow melt. Do you know what I mean? And these clearly, you know, I, these show how it gets all wet down there. And, mm -hmm. You know, and it is kind of going to go across his lot. You know what I mean? When you look at it this way, you can see how a lot of the melt's coming this way. But there's grades here that obviously the builder didn't touch. And it's like some notches and stuff where it crosses and transects the, the adjacent property. Even when I did the trenches, I maintained the 15-foot setback because I didn't want to... So, but what you're saying is you did the trenches because you were hoping they'd catch a lot of this water for you. Yes. And, and so... You know, and then, and if I, yeah, I was hoping to solve two problems with one. Yeah. That's what I was um, it doesn't exacerbate the problem. It's just, I think it's... What was interesting on the, the pushing all. forward on the following Sunday, all that water is gone off of his lot. So we have all that rain, all that melt, and it cooled, and then the following day, and that's why I took those pictures, yeah. it was gone. So that's really what I was trying to mm -hmm. you know, say. I mean, it happens. I'm not saying it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And that is the lowest point in my lot. Right. And it's actually, if you look at the, um, like this drawing right here, this corner is the lowest spot on the hill because, and that's on his lot, mm -hmm. because everything comes down to that corner. Mm -hmm. And when you look at, um, there's a picture there that shows, the, uh, yeah, that's the lowest, well, the first one here. That's the lowest spot right there. Mm -hmm. Which, and and that's the, the lowest spot. <laughs> These were the two. So the perimeter was here. I just extended it down. Now, where's the okay. in the in this picture, Matt? Can you identify the where the wetland is probably is? Which I couldn't. You know, it doesn't show anything on my map. Yeah, right. So down there. It's all right. So looking at these pictures. If you guys look and you look back at the pictures, what you're going to notice, there's still water essentially on the Sunday yeah. flowing out of these trenches. Okay? So even when water disappears off the hillside, there's still water coming off these trenches. Mm -hmm. When we were all out on site, even though there was no visible water that was pooling, I was sinking in spots of the yes. pools. Okay? And the type of vegetation that's out there isn't suggestive that even though that's the lowest point, that it retain that volume of water at all times. Right. Otherwise, the wetland that's right here and goes behind this barn and stretches up to here where there's an intermittent stream coming through, that wetland would have just expanded all the way out, mm -hmm. regardless of mowing or not. So what's the violation? What's the potential violation? The potential violation is this is causing, this change the water table. And changing the water table to change the flow pattern, which is causing an alteration to this wetland with the increased water volume. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a direct alteration as defined in the act. I'm not following. I mean, the whole area is is, is mowed. Well, here, then let me guide you. Uh, you know, it's like uh, you're, you're saying that his raised. What I'm saying beds. is that this this raised drainage trench, garden bed drainage trench, it is it's, it's drawn on his plant as a trench. That and it looks similar to his epic trench coming okay. off his drain line, which means it's yep. carrying a heavy volume of water to begin with. Yep. Okay. So, I mean, if there's enough volume of water to that he's saying it would support a garden, it's, all, it's, it's an awful lot of water. Right. Right. So what's happening here is the water is coming out of these trenches, heading down here, keeping this wetland area and the buffer zone around it essentially soaked 
through yeah. most of the year. The time that you guys and I went out on that property was a dry time. So what are you advocating? Are you advocating that we tell them he has to smooth well, over the trench? There's got, I don't know about mm -hmm. smoothing over the trench, but we've got to mitigate this so that it's not, that volume of water is somehow. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I disconnect the permanent drain and put it above ground, it'll just do the same thing it did before. Which is, when it was installed when you bought the house. Yeah. Oh, so just, it wasn't, you just the permanent drain wasn't something that you put in. No. no, no. And it was so, I mean, the violation happened in 2016 when, he, when the house was built. Well, but when, when was the house built? 2016. 2016. Yes, there is a violation. But I mean, somehow yeah. adding these trenches exacerbated the issue. I mean, you could see a point source discharge and two spots coming right off you. No, what, yeah. Yeah. Water. what exacerbated the issue was building the house and the foundation and, and cutting into the hillside. Yeah. It, it's, the, it's the drain. It's not the trench. Well, I, Mr. Chairman, if I, you know, I hate to disagree with the engineer, but that was my career for many years, so I'll, I'll keep doing it. Um, I don't know enough to know that it's not the trenches. Th th these trenches were dug, and I, I thought I heard gravel. Yeah, that's gra gra gravel was put in them. So if so, if they're if if they're now if that gravel is now where water is normally in the soil, and the water now has a path to easily come out of the soil, go into that trench, flow down the hill, and then come out. You may be you, those trenches may be Carl, acting like Carl, a drain. Carl, what I'm what I'm saying is it, it's. These gravel trenches that were put in, it's not the gravel trenches, because what's happening is the surrounding soil cannot allow that water to infiltrate. So all this water they're capturing because they built the house and they're draining it there is going into the trenches and saturating everything. I, I, I hear you, but there is a possibility in my mind, a mm -hmm. technical possibility, that that ground is normally wet anyway, and that the trenches are draining the ground. The trenches are providing a vehicle just like you, you put a, a pipe down the road and you you know mm -hmm. you can create a trench underground, right? So you could easily have created an area that is trying to drain that top foot or two feet of that soil, which is normally saturated, well, but now it can come out of saturation. If, if I may. the trench and dump out below, because this is, uh, my impression was this was a new problem, Matt. Do you know, it, I mean, this, this is new to the neighbor. This is new in the neighborhood because these trenches were put in yeah. after the house was done. So what I'm saying is, it, you know, it wasn't just an extension of trenches off the line. There's an extension of the drain line, and then there's trenches that cause a, a, an extension in two spots. So what you've done is you've taken a point source discharge that was much farther away and had more of his property to dissipate on, is now being concentrated, moved closer to a point where it's now being a point source discharge there's and causing a problem in the water table going to that wetland. It's you an obvious problem. It it's there. I mean, to me, it's unmistakable. I, agree. I, agree. I, agree. I, agree. I, I think that trenches have changed something. You know, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So so I, 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 I guess I, this is where I'm confused, Carl. I, my impression from what you said is that the trenches were added. Is this, these trenches, is this part of the original plan that was approved? No, I did it in the fall. Uh, I did it because I figured that I would bring a gentleman into the trench. But, but you were getting wet hillside previously. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He was, but not the neighbor. Where was <laughs> well, we don't know this that. Is, uh, well, so where, so like where, the, where the angle changes is where I picked it up. So it discharged up here. It discharged up here. So you know that large evergreen tree we walked around? If that volume of water was there perpetually, that tree would be dead. It shouldn't be there. It needs dry ground in order for it to grow. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you, Matt. I'm just saying, how did we ever ask the, the adjacent property owner if they noticed the problem as soon as the house moved in? Because, Carl, no, I you might ask. Be, you could be tapping into some sort of you know aquifer within the hillside that that that's coming up. That, 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 that's a possibility. There's also the possibility that even before the trench was put in, the whole reason he put it in is because he had a problem. Well, to, to answer that, that question, I did speak to the abutting neighbor mm -hmm. on, I believe it was uh, 220 Sunny Hill. It was a blue house below yours. Mm -hmm. The lady that lived in the house, uh, it's been in their family for generations. She's lived there for many a year. She said that the aggravated problem did not start until after the trenches were installed. And I did in okay. September. So. Okay. And so, where on that map 
is the 100 foot buffer. The trenches are out of the buffer zone. However, it's causing a violation within the buffer zone. It's causing an alteration of wetlands. And under, three tar under 310 CMR 10.02, under Statement of Jurisdiction, it does say that work that is outside of the buffer zone that causes a problem within the buffer zone or a wetland automatically becomes jurisdictional. That's correct. <coughs> I mean, I have no issue just disconnecting it. I mean, it's right there. I, it's where it well, here, here's my fear. I think you need to disconnect it and um, restore, restore the soil that was there. Um, and, and remove the gravel. I have to. I mean, I, like I said, I was just trying to make a reason. No, no, I, I don't think anybody well, here is. saying what you were doing was inten intentionally malicious. It's just the way things turned out. Well, it, well frankly, it sounds like you were uh, trying to, you know, uh, solve a, an issue that you had on your property. I mean. What if, I, I guess, if we restored the pipe to where it was before, and I know we've talked a lot about stormwater runoff and rain gardens and things like that, would that be an appropriate use for something like that? Like where it discharged to put in like a little rain garden thing or something? I don't know enough about it, but could you put some sort of big drywall? Well, I don't know if a drywall would support that volume of water if no, we're no, having no, a subsurface no. problem, but I don't know, perhaps maybe if I don't know, Todd, what do you think? Maybe if he completes his raised bed garden or does something along the line of a rain garden instead of pulling it out? Well, one point is that I did the September and stuff, so all I did was dig the trenches, put the dirt right on top of the stone. Mm -hmm. So my intent in the spring was to complete the perimeter, you know what I mean? Fill in, you know, because I was going to go three or four feet on either side and three or four feet on either end. And, kind of, you know, do the perimeter and put some more. It, it, it sounds to me like that the trenches that he built accelerate the movement of water down the hillside. Mm -hmm. And the acceleration of the water down the hillside means that more water ends up on the neighbor's property. Um, you know, I'm a little skeptical. Well, not, I don't know. It's. It feels like, you know, I, I hear what Matt says about, you know, well, this is a, this is off-site, you know, and it moves more water, you know, closer to the wetlands. No, it doesn't move it. It moves it in the wetlands. It's actually in it. You know, um, but, uh, and I, I would have a hard time uh, telling this fellow to do anything more than undo what he did. You know, return it to the previous conditions. You know, to start talking about things that are going to cost real money, like dry wells and, and all that other stuff. I, I have a real hard time with that. You know, I agree. I I kind of took those comments as a suggestion, a helpful suggestion for someone who's got a problem with water and portion of the yard. Right, Mr. Chairman. If I might ask. Yeah. Okay, we've had the two one of the two wettest early winters that I recall mm -hmm. in a long, long time, as observed by our own lake. You know, itself up a little bit. So, is it possible that was the problem reported? You did it this year, right? You did the trench this year. Did you have a problem the prior year? I don't know. I mean, what my thought is is that where I went length on the length on the trench, it might be blocking a lot of the hill, the stuff from the left, not necessarily what's coming down. So. Before you modified the drain, the drain just emptied right out onto the grass. I, I I agree that the trenches accelerated the water down the hill, and rather than let it infiltrate and all that nice grass hillside, it just went faster down the hill and maybe picks them up along the way, as mm -hmm. Carl suggested, and goes to the wetland. And, I'll, and you know, I'll do whatever I need to. It's just it, it kind of be a stinker to have to pull all that stone out. I don't know what the hell I would do with it. So. See, stone's it's pretty stone. valuable. I'm sure someone will, uh, so would be happy to take it off your hands. It's stone, it, it's not gravel, it's stone? Three-quarter track. Oh my god, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a perfect system to drain the land. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, think, I, I think that probably the safest and most cost-effective is just to but restore it. If, 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 if get if all it, that stuff out of there and restore it. 
Because last year was wetter than this year, Jack. Last year was a lot wetter than this year, and there wasn't a problem last year. <laughs> but, he didn't, but he didn't have the stuff in last year. That's what I mean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's my point. <laughs> but if he takes the trap rock out, and there's still a lot of water coming out of there, it, to me, it's like it's not our issue any, anymore. It's like I that, tend to agree with you. You know, it's it's because I mean it is what it is. It's, it's a hillside. There's water. The water flows downhill. Right. And um, that was the condition that the neighbor had for the yeah. since 2016. Mm -hmm. And the wetland. The only thing that's interesting too, there is a little low spot right there where it tends to go. You know where it goes over. I mean, but again, I don't want to. I, like I said, I specifically held my setback. I didn't want to influence my mm -hmm. neighbors in any way. Mm -hmm. If that grade was to be increased, it might slow or create more of a cooling effect and keep it on my lot versus sending it out. But again, then I'm really altering something. You know what I mean? Uh, but it's not. But it's not in a resource area. It's not. It's not in a regulated area. It's more than 100. It's not even within a 100 foot buffer. Probably, probably the most unfortunate part of the, the idea and the design, because it probably was a good idea, is that he ran them up and down instead of across the grade. Right. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because I can do them either way, the gardens, but the drains go down. That's the drain. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I think, you know, short of getting an engineer in there to really do some digging and thing, I think restoring it is the best, and then it's. That's the condition that pre-existed. Pull the ripper out of the shore. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Someone going to make that a motion? I'm not sure how to how to uh, say that. How we direct the move to <laughs> um, springtime, right? Yeah, the springtime. Yeah, yeah. springtime. Yeah. Spring yeah. I mean, you got to wait till it snows another two feet. Are we doing yeah. that? Uh, the resident at 228 uh, West Street um, shall restore the um, modifications to his property um, to the existing conditions um, to the original state prior to the observation of uh, the water flowing to the wetland from the gravel trenches that had been installed. So we're directing him to restore the original condition, remove mm -hmm. the wrap. I, I, I move we uh, direct uh, this person to uh, restore uh, the trenches to the original conditions by our, uh, removing uh, the grab. Motion. Second. Second. Roll call vote. Richard Birch. I abstain because I have none of the documentation. Okay. Katie Childs. Aye. Carlo. Aye. Ken Jones. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. Bob Peace. Aye. I vote aye as well. Um, seeing it's the winter time, uh, once we're out of the winter season, I think that's when you undertake this. So, springtime. April, I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Because whatever. Should April, May. Should we put a date on this that we want to want that to go up? Yes. Yeah, Why don't we uh, see if we can't get an update by? Did you say May first? That works out. I'm fine with I'm fine with June first or June first. Okay. I, I would I would fine tune that and, and have the homeowner notify Matt um, when he starts work, so that he could actually go down there and see the condition and. Sure. Yep. I'm just going to rent the tractor again. Okay. okay. Yeah. What's so that date? June first. Completed by June first. The, the and the applicant will notify uh, the agent uh, prior to restoration. I might, it might um, move yep. us to rescind the motion and put all of those conditions into the motion and then approve it. I think that's a yeah. good point. Uh, I changed my original motion. Who seconded it? I did. You agree I, to I those changes? I agree to those changes, yes. Great. Uh, motion second. Roll call vote. Katie Childs. Aye. Bob Peace. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. Ken Jones. Carol Right. I vote aye as well. And I still abstain as I don't have any of the documents. Good. Sorry. Thank you. Hey, no worries. You try. try. You try. <laughs> no, who's the, it was worthy of a shot. I just figured what the heck. You know. Mm -hmm. It's for so. Yeah. All right. Yes. 
Thank you. All right. Uh, old business update on Trails Grant. How about Tom Humbert Fire Road? Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Under investigation by police. Okay. Update on Trails Grant status contracts. Um, when I went to the uh, Trails, uh, remember you guys paid 40 bucks so I could go to a Trails conference? Mm -hmm. uh, and while I was at the Trails conference, um, I noticed that uh, somebody uh, used, got a recreational Trails program grant to install uh, a kayak rack, a kayak dock. And uh, I gave, sent you guys a copy and we got copies yep. here. Uh, and these kayak docks, uh, you take, you set the kayak down in the middle of the dock, uh, and then you use the paddle to take and push yourself on or pull yourself off. So you, it, the whole thing about stability and getting in and out of the kayak mm -hmm. goes away. Um, and they did this all with the grant money, you know. And there is, I think, it's, I think it's a twenty percent match. Um, and so that's on the one hand, okay? So I went to the Trails Grant and I saw that they had other people have used Trails Grant money, you know, to purchase the dock and, uh, you know, they purchased both the floating dock, you know, and then this little attachment to the floating dock. And then I also noticed uh, you guys appointed me to the Open Space Committee. And I was reviewing the Open Space uh, Plan uh, analysis of needs. I had to go back and reread the whole analysis of needs things and the results of the survey. And I had to go back and reread all of the public comments. You know, we had these open-ended uh, responses on the citizen survey. And what came up uh, five or six or seven times in the public comment was a request for uh, kayak access um, at um, Lake Shirley and at Lake Whalen. Um, and so, um, you know, I was asking Matt, you know, where is this uh, Stumps Cove thing, okay? Uh, and he showed me on the map, you know, where Stumps Cove was, and I highlighted on the second page here. And I note that, A, first of all, uh, the um, parking lot in question, or the parking spaces in question, or the violation, are right there. Uh, and also, uh, on the other side, there's land where you could construct a parking, uh, a parking area, you know, if you had to, um, uh, you know, over more toward Reservoir Road, you know, over here. You know, mm -hmm. so it looks, you know, it looks like it's all open pine forest. Mm -hmm. um, and so it might be possible, you know, to put in, uh, you know, a floating ramp. You know, there's a lot of pros and cons to that. You know, you got liability. Uh, you know, who's going to put it in in the spring, take it out in the fall? Um, you know, are we going to take and have a gate, you know, and open and close the gate every day? Um, are we going to require uh, stickers, you know, for people to park in the lot, you know, to use it? You know, like showing they're a resident of Lunenburg. Uh, you know, liability issues. Uh, you know, and then the same thing, people, you know, requested it on Lake Whalen. I don't know much about Lake Whalen, you know, is there already access I, is there already a boat launch yeah, there and yeah. Yeah. there already is a boat launch see so for, forget about that but um because i was thinking well you know if there wasn't you know we could do it along the waterfront there right. somewhere yeah, yeah. yeah. right it's at the end of the lake it's yeah. in the public but there's a public right. it's right. in the state yeah. okay well then forget yeah. no and so there's yeah. a set, actually a set of stairs that goes down you can actually launch a kayak yeah oh you can yeah. yeah well but you know but if there is a set of stairs you know that i mean this thing makes it really easy to get in and out of kayaks. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if, how people feel. I don't know, you know, the, the deadline for the RTP grant is usually like February 2nd or something like that. You know, you know, and I, and I have to check with, to see where the town manager and where Adam was coming from this and where Jack was coming from on this. But, you know. I, I think it's a great <coughs> idea myself for, you know, specifically for Lake Shirley um, in that, on that piece of property. And I think that, you know, it's really conducive to kayak and launch a kayak, because obviously you're not going to put a boat in there. Like that. Mm -hmm. so, like, a small dock like this with a kayak launch. It, it, and I don't know about the water there, Kyle. Is the water deep uh, enough? And it, for, for kayak, for kayak I, first, I want to thank you for doing this, because this is really interesting stuff, and I never saw that, that yeah. thing. Um, and and I, I really would support, you know, getting 
access to Lake Shirley for more people in Lunenburg. And that, it is very shallow there, but a kayak, you know, I mean, shallow like, you know, a foot, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a foot on a, on, in good times. Um, <coughs> But it's a lot clearer. I, it, it's amazing that there are hardly any stumps left in there anymore, so I don't know if we can call a stump cove anymore. I don't know where okay. they went, but <laughs> well, we'll do it this way too. <laughs> but but it's a good spot. I would I would I would support that. The devil's in the detail. Like say, you got to figure out you know, who's going to maintain it, take it in, take it out, and all that stuff. And, but and the other spot, issue is, like the, would we want to take and um, you know make a new parking lot, you know, by clearing trees away, or do we want to use the, there's that existing um, you know, the nice new parking area. area that was donated to us? <laughs> the parking area that was donated to us by, you know, uh, you know, a person to be discovered later by an investigation kind of thing. Um, That's an interesting point. But, you know, I, I may not do it this year, but I, I, I'd like to start looking yeah, into it, you I know, because uh, yeah. certainly it, it came across loud and clear in the open space and recreation plan uh you know like people wanted more access and right i think it's great i think it'd be good to get a little bit more details yeah before we try to rush something into yeah. a grant application for this yeah. year yeah i agree yeah. and i don't have time anyway mm -hmm. yeah. So. yeah i think it's a great idea i think we should pursue it yeah. thank you that, that and i was also thinking about that too because uh yeah okay um, um, so uh, yes. We do have another notice of none that's not on the oh. agenda that I did send a letter out for the 18th, 139 Northfield Road. Oh. It's a notice of non compliance. Oh, okay. For uh, 139 North Northfield Road. Road. Yep. Yep. And this is under enforcement? Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Well, so, sorry, you had to wait. Thank you for the civic lesson. <laughs> so, so, just a procedural question. Um, so, is this for information only, since it's not on the agenda, or how? Just to make sure we're covered here, discussing something not on the agenda. Well, I did send him a notice of non-compliance to be here. It didn't make it on the agenda. However, when we opened the meeting, it did say um, that there may be other items discussed that not listed that may be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by the open meeting. Well, I don't okay. see this. As well, long as Todd says it's, it's okay, I, I don't think it no, should be an issue. Uh, yeah, let's let, let's hear what it is so everyone can get familiar with it and go, go from, from there. there. Exactly. The only question I have, I'm, I'm a little confused. Uh, you mentioned wetlands here. I'm trying to. I don't know where the wetlands mm -hmm. are. Maybe Matt can fill us in on Yeah, I got to pull it up. <clears throat> it explains the problem. <laughs> what was the number? 139 Northfield. James Barnaby? James P, yes. Son of a gun? Okay. Um, this is the lot on Northfield Road on the corner in North and Oak. Mm -hmm. Just basically around the corner here. Um, you guys will recall that uh, last year or the year before, um, when Mr. Uh, Matt Olson was building the home, we approved the look we were approved under a separate determination him installing a sewer line along the side of the road yep which actually went into the 30 foot no touch zone of an isolated wetland on the if you're looking at mr barnaby's house to the left and the rear mm -hmm. mr barnaby cleared off a section of his land looked like you were trying to clear some brush to maybe yes, make some lawn up the brush. well that's within the buffer zone of an isolated wetland behind you and that's so the wetland is Behind me, it's behind the area where you cleared. Property. It's behind the area where you cleared the lot, where you cleared that portion of lot. Because I, I didn't change the grade. I didn't take any fill out. I brought a little bit of topsoil and three inches to cover. Well, the, technically, that's change of fill and grade, and it's removal of vegetation. So, how, how close to the wetland was he? He's within the thirty foot 
no touch zone from my eyeball and I couldn't get specific measurements because I couldn't mm -hmm. go on his property. The area where it is in the 30 foot no touch zone actually was cleared because there was an area there where he had a sewer stub going in so it had been previously cleared it never really grew back in mm -hmm. but the area in front of the 30 foot and the 100 foot where he cleared out had basically some brush but it wasn't wetlands vegetation no it wasn't because i watched him do that and it never occurred to me that it was a violation i watched it going on you know because i drive by there two three times a day mm -hmm. um so uh My plan was to clear out, put some plantings in there, plant some grass. And so, I mean, my recommendation at this point would be, I mean, next meeting is on the 15th of January. So... I guess the tough part for a site walk this time of year is if it's snow covered, then... The wetland should be still flagged and very yeah. well defined okay. on plans. So, so could... Could you possibly uh, work with them to submit an RDA and show them where the 30 foot is and the 50 foot kind of thing? Would we need an RDA if it's just a restoration plan? Well, what I'd like to do is actually schedule the site inspection on his property on our regular site inspection day, Saturday the 11th of January. Mm -hmm. We can go onto the property with Mr. Barnaby. We can show him exactly where the wetland is because apparently he didn't know there was a wetland there. Mm -hmm. So what we should do is, is show them where the wetlands are, show them where the 30-foot zone is, and then we can take a definitive measurement to make sure he didn't intrude into the 30-foot zone. Like I said, I can only see it from eyeballing. Okay. And then we can, you know, if it's not in the 30-foot zone, we can work out a, just a general planting plan under enforcement. If it is, we're going to have to go a step further on the RDA. Well, I, I would suggest we wait. If, if there's... If there's any snow on the ground, if there's more than an inch or so of snow on the ground, I, I don't see the point in doing a, a site visit. You know, I, I would prefer to wait, you know, uh, you know, till later when uh, ground conditions would allow us to actually see vegetation and see, you know, where there's water and where there's not, you know, kind of thing, rather than when the ground's all frozen and you can't tell what's permeable and what's not, you know, and yada, yada, yada. Nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Until and nothing's going to happen. Anyway, it's, it's not like I, I, I personally think we should wait. Um, I don't have an issue with that. I would, I would schedule it at the first, first or second April meeting. That would yeah. work for me because the end of the month I'm going to Florida for four months. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lucky. All right. When you when when We're you return? You're back in May. So, so I, I would the first meeting in May. I like that. It'd be the, it's probably going to take me three, four days to get I expect I'm home by the 10th of May. The second. 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 So it'd be May 20th. Yeah, yeah. Would we have permission to walk the prompt? Or sure. We want to show you as well. Yeah, I'd like to see it because <coughs> I'm okay. on We can schedule a site inspection for the, the Saturday before, which would be the 16th of May, and then he could, we could meet with him on the 20th. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how the plan it works. All right. We're jealous. We'll let you know. <laughs> I'll fire off the grill. <laughs> In Florida? Yours, absolutely. <laughs> Very good, thank you, sir. All right, thank you very much for your time. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sure. Why are you guys still here? Okay. Do we have any updates on Saliba? No, I don't have any updates on. I just put if any. Yeah, I don't know. Rich, did you? Um, I know you had talked about talking to Brandon about some of the requirements that we we needed to do. I have, and I have not heard back from Brandon with the um, requirements for the grant. Okay. And and the open space committee had a meeting uh, last Tuesday, um, and I told them you wanted to know more about the requirements, and um, he said something, and I forget exactly what he said, but uh, something about that. Um, Paula was there, and she said the general idea, you know, because she was on the committee that. The parking lot was supposed to was going to go across the street. Um, 
and, uh, and that was about it. Yeah. That's all we got. That's all we got, Rich. <laughs> okay, because the town voted to accept that property. To purchase the land. Purchase the land. The last town meeting. And it's 250 acres, correct? It's 259 or 69 acres. There's, there's, a, there's a parcel on the north side of uh, Northfield Road, and then there's a smaller piece on the south side of Northfield Road. That's um, in the area of Old Stage Coach Road, which is before the golf course if you're heading down towards, you know, from Chase Road down towards the golf course. I'm only familiar with the, the stuff on the north side of the yeah. road. So, so it's really it's on the other side of Settlers Cross and, and golf and it, course. You're you're on the west side, correct? It, it does. The, the the piece, west side. Yeah. It does it does wrap around and will abut the piece that has the conservation. Oh yeah. 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 And I don't think it abuts the piece with the uh, conservation. Oh, it does it doesn't on that back side? No, no, the the current golf course property encompasses all three sides of okay. the, the solar project okay. and the conservation restriction. Then the houses in from right. New West Towns and the backs of those lots of the, the west boundary of the okay. conservation restriction area. All right. Yeah, I thought there might be one little piece that connected, but maybe not. Yeah, I thought the yeah, same I thing. Don't think you have to look at the plot, um, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, all I have is the lot, lot, uh, lot, one, the, this right here. Yeah, it extends. Yeah, so our conservation restriction is right in here, so there's all of this land. Yeah, so it doesn't actually. That's actually separate. Yeah, that's the thing that I'm looking at here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do we have any certificates of compliance tonight, Matt? None. Um, meeting minutes. Did everyone get a chance to review the December 4th minutes? I move we approve the December 4th minutes. Second. Motion second. Any comments? Roll call vote, Richard Birch. Aye. Katie Childs. Aye. Carl Lapp. Aye. Ken Jones. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. Bob Pease. Aye. I vote aye as well. Uh, committee reports. Any updates? Just a uh, quick question for the treasurer. When you were talking to them about the Trump funds and Hall's Road, and those, did you happen to ask if we could use that for the Pollinator Habitat? The, the Hall's Road. Absolutely. You did. I, no, I did not ask for it. I did not ask. I did not ask, okay? But, um, uh, you know, can you, you read what I, what I wrote here? Yeah. You know, where it says. Right, it can be used on the property. Used on the property. Yeah. And that's everyone's assumption. Right. I have spent a lot of hours trying to come up with the original documentation, and I can't find it. And I'm going to go back and do a thorough search sometime when I have time on my hands in the library by going back to all the old Tom reports starting from when this, this funds first showed up. Um, see if I can find the actual documentation. But everyone's operating from the same assumption and reading from the same script that it can be used for anything on the Hollis Road stuff. Okay. So if, and, someone, if someone did make a donation to that, and earmarked it, yeah. it could be used yeah. for that. Yep, because all of the rent that comes in every, every month is a donation. Right. So, any other updates on committees that haven't been covered already? Seeing none, uh, agent's report. Got anything for us, Matt? One second. <clears throat> okay, uh, under land updates, requests, and regulation review, the only thing I can tell you under regulation review is that the state the Commonwealth is, is changing regulations on, as a result of an adjudicatory hearing, as to um, when DEP's rights of appeal expire. And a lot of that was based on when 
the stuff was postmarked. <coughs> now, like, for example, the stuff that you guys signed on tonight. Tomorrow, I will take it, I'll make the appropriate copies, hand deliver it to the applicants, they always come pick it up. Or, um, well, and then what I do is I turn around and I mail it out to DEP on the same day. I make their copies, mail them out, put the stuff in the file, put the uh, notices of intent in a separate designated area where I wait for the recordings to come in before I file them away in the draws. Um, with this um, change, I would have to write my orders of conditions using the EDEP system so that the state boiler would be the same boiler, but I have to write it on their database, keep a hard copy on their computer, and they would get it instantly. So because it would be registered on their computer, the only other way to do it would be registered mail. I'm, and I'm not gonna do it registered mail because it's like seven bucks a document at a minimum. You know, we got um, that in an in email from Mac. Yep, the DEP just came out with the regulation review. Yep. So right now it's under review for consideration. It'll probably go into effect sometime next spring. Which, which brings up my question for our remote chairman about um, have we made any progress on pursuing the e-permitting system you know, within the town of Lunenburg? Uh, I did speak with Adam Bernie and he is working with Matt and should have it ready for our preliminary testing in early January. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, actually, it is, it is yeah. almost ready. Oh, anything else? Uh, if any? I might, Go ahead, Rich. I might add under agents report legal updates, uh, the town is in possession of a check for $11,000 to complete the agreement made with Danny Gardner and Greener Living for their past fines. Wow. So I just want to let everybody know that they did pay the, uh, the agreed amount, so we are in possession of that money. So I would like to work with Matt on a press release just stating the fact that the town did receive monies to cover fines in in the amount of $11,000. I think that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Do we want to make that motion? To do what? A press release? Yes. I don't think we need to. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Any updates on Hickory Hills or Lake Shirley Drawdown? Uh, I spoke to um, uh, John Fortune the other day. Um, the lake is basically coming up as a result of all the melt mm. and the snow. So they've reopened the siphons basically full blast to bring it back down to the four feet. The original drawdown was quite successful. Okay. Um, I am working with the Shirley Conservation Commission on monitoring the Lake Shirley drawdown, which appeared to be happening prematurely um, because they were supposed to go into the Shirley Con contest for an emergency cert. Shirley Concom stated that they felt um, it wasn't necessary, uh, so they rejected it. Um, in speaking to the gatekeepers, the lakes come back up quite a bit, so it's under two feet. So um, that's the general update at this point. I'm just okay. monitoring the situation. I've asked some more questions of the Shirley Concom. I'm waiting for them to get back to me. Apparently, according to the Shirley Concom, LSIC's orders of conditions from Shirley has been sitting in LSIC's post office box since December 7th. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we'll I do have one comment on that, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Rick. Um, just, just because such a, a, an ordeal was made of the fact that LSIC was always in compliance, I would like the agent with a course approval from the full commission to just notify the town manager that they are currently in violation in the town of Shirley for the drawdown. Uh, it clearly states that an order of conditions is not valid until it has been read, um, submitted and posted with the registry of deeds. And at last count, Matt had informed me that they were down 
32 inches. So I'm not sure without Shirley's order condition being valid how the dam got opened up and drawn down to that level, nor did they receive any authorization from Shirley to go past December 1st, which uh, I believe was the date in Shirley's order conditions for the end of the drawdown, but as of yet have not read the full order. But, but we gave them an extension. But I do think it's prudent to just document um, violations yeah, at this point. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, I, I, do we want to make that a motion? Or Matt, you'll just document the uh, non-compliance. I can document the non-compliance. Very good. And and send a copy to the town manager, mm -hmm. as Rich suggested. Any updates on the uh, proposed? Thank you. Any updates on the proposed uh, signage for no hunting? I have. I'm going to put them up in the spring. How about the ATV signs? Um. I have a quote, and actually, I believe those are on order from Voss Signs. Thank you. All right. Um, any additional comment from the commissioners? Um, I reached out to the assessor. Um, uh, Manchester, yeah, Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission's GIS department uh, created two foot contours. Uh, for the entire town um, and put them in something called the GIS database and I'm trying to work between Adam Bernie and Harold Sh Scheib, uh to see if we can't get um, access GIS to put them up on the assessor's web, web website as a, layer. as a layer you know the layer would only appear when you're up uh, you know at a small scale because otherwise, it's, it's, they're meaningless. No, you know, they're only meaningless at a small scale. But uh, they, I think they would be useful for a lot of things, for the planning department, yeah. for us. Definitely. Uh, so um, so uh, I, I am working on that, um, and I hope to pull it off. Great. All right. Good. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, yes, I'd like to, to um, uh, suggest that we um, Try to get in the tax man, you know, and the tax bills go out. Um, various groups around town put things into them, like mm -hmm. the sewer department does. I'd like to see if we couldn't get in line to put our pamphlet into idea. a mailing. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. I don't know when the next one is, but I, I know they yeah. like them. Because that was the finished document, right? Yeah. 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 I think that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. So could I? Um, Take the mission to go see when we would need to have that available and what it takes to do that. Please do. Any other comments from commissioners? Uh, seeing there's no public present, um, I'll accept the motion to adjourn until January 15, 2019. Our next meeting will be at the uh, right back here in the Bladimir Eating Room Town Hall. So moved. Second. All in favor? Roll call vote. Rick Birch. Katie Charles. Aye. Carl Luck. Aye. Ken Jones. Aye. Jack Rabbit. Aye. Bob Peace. Aye. I vote aye as well. Aye. <laughs> <laughs>